Every month, we bring you the latest and big news from around the gaming industry. From small indie devs to AAA, we got you covered. And this month, we have some rumors and big stories to get into. I'm Ben, this is Critical Hit, and today we're bringing you five big gaming stories for July. Our top story is about Star Wars, because of course it's fresh on everyone's mind after watching the accolade. Esther done some reviews of the show in different videos, and so far, it's been disappointing. But that's not the story we're covering here. We're going to talk about Star Wars Outlaws. A gameplay video and early reviewers got to try Star Wars Outlaws recently, and reviews have been mixed. Now I'm going to try to be as impartial in my reporting as I can be, despite what I've said on this game previously. So let's start with the positives. The open world environments and cities look good to explore, with decent stealth mechanics to smuggle your way into cities, or I, I guess cargo so to speak. The shooting seemed about on par with the EA Battlefield experience, and the space combat seemed decent. It does nothing new overall, it could be a short and fun experience. Now for the bad. The missions appear quite linear. The stealth, while it was reported, can be somewhat satisfying. The second you shoot your blaster, it's going to alert all the enemies from there on. A quick note though, as you look at her knocking everyone out with their bare fists, including the stormtroopers with those big helmets, it really took me a lot out of the immersion. Maybe just go back to using that stun device. This would have gone a long way to helping that feel a lot more realistic. Yeah, I know, for a Star Wars game. And my final point on this is that all you get is a blaster and whatever weapon you're supposed to have in a mission. Unfortunately, they made the creative choice of not allowing you to use the enemy weapons as this will help to allow the game stay challenging as the creative director thinks this is what people will find the most fun. And I'm just going to tell you, I disagree with this point completely. I actually love a game that lets me use the amazing weapons that I just saw being fired on me and I actually feel like that sticks with the whole smuggler or rogue s type character. But of course I'm going to say my final judgement till the release. Star Wars Outlaw though is a Disney Star Wars product and even though I didn't see it, I expect modern day politics to be inserted here. Ok wait, the main character design, but the rest didn't seem too overt. However, we'll continue to monitor this title and we're going to let you know what we think of this as we get closer to and post release in the fall. Our next story is a rumor from PlayStation. The PS3 was notoriously complicated with a lot of developers at the time citing its development as being difficult, and that left backwards compatibility with the PS4 and the PS5 challenging. So with that backstory, the rumor is that Sony is now working on an emulator that will allow backwards compatibility. I know, it's about time, right? But Sony just released its numbers for its PS Plus showing that only 35% of PS Plus users subscribe to either the premium or extra tier. This is no doubt them trying to make the premium tier more alluring, because every company loves those reoccurring subscriptions. I personally have been on a big binge of playing nostalgic games, mostly the PS1 at the moment, but if I'm the audience this is geared towards, you know it may work. Again, this isn't quite confirmed, but I think it makes a lot of sense, and I find new games rarely meet the standard of the previous versions nowadays. Looking forward to seeing more of this story in the future. Of course, we're going to keep you posted about it. Our next story is about Amazon, and it's pushing heavier into the gaming market, with 8 games currently in development and 2 of those dropping this year. That's Thrones of Liberty, an MMO that we're probably going to check out, and a new version of New World, which is going to change what was an MMO formula into now an action RPG. But the reason they're so interested in this game push is because earlier this year they released the Follow TV series. If you've not watched it yet, it was actually surprisingly good. Well after that came out, a lot of people picked up the Fallout series games again, with Fallout 4 in particular seeing massive boosts of player accounts. Since Amazon does not own these video games, but Microsoft does through Bethesda, Amazon now wants to ensure it can benefit from game sales when it releases a high quality show, with them pointing to, and I'm not kidding here, as Lord of the Rings brings a power. They want to have a good game to match it. I know everything I've said up till now made you feel like they were in touch with the audience and good business practices. But sorry, I have to ruin this story by saying they actually believe anything about the Rings of Power was good. Still, I think they're on the right track with Fallout. Now, replace everything about the Rings of Power, including its showrunners, and maybe you can get more winners for this not-so-fledgling streaming service. Next up is Stellar Blade. Yeah, we're talking about it again, because it sold over 1 million copies on the PS5, which is pretty good for a console exclusive. But the real story here is that this sleeper hit continues to push updates, new modes, and DLC. If you wanted to see even a new outfit, they've released a ton of those, but their recent roadmap for the game was shared on Twitter, and it looks like their updates aren't quite done yet. They're going to have a photo mode, new skins, a collaboration with another title, 
and it finally looks like we might expect a sequel in the future. Nothing of course is certain yet, but Shift Up is a developer who wanted nothing more than to please their audience and continues to do this at the moment through free updates. I can't wait to see what they do again in the future, and I'm looking forward to their sequel and in supporting this developer when that sequel comes out. For our final story, as always, we're going to highlight a couple games that we're going to check out this month. First up is Flintlock, that new baby at the center of the DEI movement, and we can't wait to get our hands on, you know what, I can't even tell it's a joke. Anyone that's seen this channel knows that I would rather juggle flaming chainsaws and play this game. But as I alluded to before, I am going to check out that MMO, Thrones of Liberty. And for a good single player experience, it's going to be Legends of Hero, Trails Through Daybreak. So this game did release in 2021 in Japan, but hear me out. It came to Steam in 2023 and is finally making its way to the PS4, PS5 and Switch on July 5th, or as of when this video drops, maybe tomorrow. This is a long-standing series, starting with the Trails in the Sky, and I may receive some hate for this, but they have had both great and not so great games in the series, but they absolutely hit more than they miss. The Trails series does a great job of tying in the, I believe, 10 mainland entries and four different parts, and from what I've heard, Trails Through Daybreak may be the best one yet. I know it's been on other platforms, but now this is my chance to get to enjoy it since it's finally getting released on the PS5. And those are our stories for July. Let us know your thoughts on them down below, and maybe you're excited for a game that's not on my radar here. I would be very interested in hearing about them in the comment section. But as always, thank you for sticking with me, and if you made it this far, leaving a like and subscribing goes a long way to helping us continue what we do. I'm Pin, you're awesome. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.